Y'all better have some good questions for me. Can you hear me loud and clear? Word, word, word. All right. So let's see here. I guess I will let you guys request to talk. Maybe wait a few more minutes to see if anybody else joins before we get started. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing good. Had a good birthday yesterday. Um, so hyped for the song to come out. And yeah, I'm ready for y'all's questions. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see. Uh, and yeah, before we get started, um, don't be weird. So uh, that's the only rule. Don't be weird or I will, yeah, pick you out of here. So don't do that. But uh, all right, let's get this request to chat from exactly. Um, okay, he's not answering. We'll get somebody else. Hello. Yo, what's going on, man? Uh, so my question is, what's your writing process for your song? It's a good question. What's your name, man? Uh, Logan. Logan. What's up, Logan? It's a good question. Uh. It really varies. Like, um, a lot of times I'm writing songs, like, on a walk and stuff. So, like, I find a beat or I'll get sent a beat. Um, and I'll just kind of, like, usually the first couple lines are just, like, spontaneous and just kind of what I'm feeling in the moment um, and what I'm, you know, vibing off of the beat. And then after I get it's that's the hardest part really is to find the first couple lines, but usually they just come to me when I keep trying. And um, after that, I really sit down and like try to kind of f formulate a story or a concept for the song. And um, yeah, usually I'm really slow at writing, but um, usually I will bounce it out to my phone and I'll go on a walk. Um, because I like to be outside and walking just really helps my creativity. And um, I'll just listen to it off my phone while I'm while I'm walking, and just try to come up with stuff that kind of achieves the story that I set out to write. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of struggling with like not being able to find a good rhyme or like not knowing where to go with the story, but I just, um, at those times, I kind of just take a step back and, like, either take a break or maybe wait till the, uh, the next day and go on another walk. And, yeah, I mean, I write, like, a lot in the studio, but I would say I write mostly, like, on walks. And, yeah, I mean, it just ends up turning out to be a song. It's pretty funny how it works. But thanks for the question, dude. Or that's a good question. If you want to start off with. All right, let's see. We got Sleepy Alex. Hello. Yo, what's up, Alex? All right, my question is, um, do you plan on doing any collabs in the future with anybody like Rose Boy, Pofu, or anybody? No, yeah, so, um, I definitely do, like, I, it's been really cool to kind of get, like, invited into the community, sort of, um, with, uh, once I put Fools out, like, uh, a lot of people in the lo-fi community and just music community in general, uh, showed me a lot of love, so I was able to, you know, meet some people like Roseboy and, like, Pafu and, of course, like sarcastic sounds and people, um, just a bunch of people really, um, and made a bunch of new friends. And yeah, I mean, I've definitely got some stuff in the works and 
um it's tough because everybody's kind of got their own thing going on but um i definitely see you know some collabs coming soon uh especially with people like rose boy um maybe like thomas reed um how food would be dope as well yeah just really but anybody that i'm a fan of like i would love to collab with a lot of those guys um and i think we'll definitely make it happen just kind of uh once both of our schedules uh are freed up you know but yeah good question man all right thanks alex who else we got let me uh look in the chat here um Leah says, Foster, I have a question. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you all. Okay. Let's see. Um, all right. Pizza. Foster's first stand. Can you hear me? Yo, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Uh, I Dude, have... What's your name real quick? Uh, I don't. I, I just go by pizza. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's okay. You can just be pizza. Fuck yeah. Uh, All right, pizza. What's up, man? Uh, how do you feel about me like digging up a lot of your old songs and shit? That's a good question. Um, it's definitely not something I'm used to. Um, I think it's cool. Um, it's kind of just like it's kind of mind blowing how you know like. I've even told some of my friends after you've dug up some of the stuff you've dug up, just talking to them about how, like, which, which, which stuff, like, I've um, just like, I don't know. I mean, stuff that. Let's see, like, I think you've even gotten some like Snapchat stories and stuff, or uh, uh, even like the TikToks and stuff. Yeah, some of those. Yeah. But uh, or not TikToks. I mean the vines. Yeah, yeah. But um, I have all of those. Yeah, like, I just, they always used to say, like, I remember growing up and being in, like, late middle school or, like, high school, and that everyone would, all the teachers would be like, be careful what you do online, like, the internet's forever, and, like, I obviously paid attention to that, but I didn't realize how forever it really is, like, even the stuff that you don't think yeah. is forever is forever. That's why I don't share my name but, online. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, but yeah, I mean, it's been cool. It's uh, it's especially been cool because, like, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the people that are becoming my fans are like new, you know, because of fools um, kind of popping off. But I've been making music for like ten years, so it's cool to kind of like show that 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 there's some history, and that I'm not just a brand new artist. Because I mean, I've worked really hard to get to where I'm at. So, like, you're kind of shining some light to that, so I think it's dope. So, like, you're not an industry plant? Like, I'm proof that you're not an industry right. plant? That's good. Yeah, that's right. Definitely not an in industry plant. Uh, if, that, if that would happen, that would happen a while ago. But, yeah, I, I worked pretty hard to get here, so that's cool that you're digging up the evidence. No problem. But, yeah, man, appreciate the question. Appreciate you being the first stand. Oh, man. All right, let's see. All right. Ooh, got two people requesting to speak. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, yo, what's up, man? What's your name? Uh, Harrison. What's up, Harrison? What you uh, got for me, man? Just wondering if you could uh, give us a little preview. You know, like one line maybe of your new song. Oh, dude. Well, I mean, you can listen to more than one line if you uh, check it out on like TikTok or um, anything like that. But yeah, I can give you a little rundown of like what it's about, kind of. Um, yeah. It's, what's, uh, what's the uh, what's the story behind it? It's a pretty cool story, honestly. Um, it's pretty sad as well, but. Uh, it's about like two 16 year olds who are in love and like living 
the like teenage reckless life, you know, sneaking out at night. They just got their driver's license, so I just like when I was riding it, I was thinking how cool it would have been to have a girlfriend when I was 16, just getting my license. So it's about kind of just like that crazy time period of life. And then there's like a sad twist um, in the second verse where um, something happens to the girl. And it's uh, kind of related to just them just getting their license. So, yeah. But it's pretty cool. I think y'all are going to like it. Sounds dope. Sounds dope. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you guys should pre-save it if you haven't. That would make me very happy. Yeah, I already have. Word, man. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. All right, man. All right, let's get some more questions in here. Come on, you don't have anything to ask me? Another question from Pizza? All right. Uh, What's up again, sir? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. All right. Um, I have a question about how did you get into Mac Miller? Because I know he's a big influence on you. I know you met That's him. That's a great question. That is a great question. Um... Well, that would be, let's see, I would probably be 13, maybe, or something, when I got into Mac Miller. And before I did, I didn't even listen to hip-hop at all. In fact, I didn't, like, I kind of thought it was, I don't know, I wasn't very, I didn't like it that much. Like, um, I grew up listening to, like, the Beatles, and more, like, rock and roll folk kind of stuff um and i remember like when rap started to become a big thing and like little wayne lil wayne was like um i just said little wayne lil wayne was like um blowing up and stuff uh or he was like what everybody was listening to and i remember like i didn't like it that much and i actually kind of like hated on it not like publicly or anything i was like 12 but like I just was like, what is this? Like, I don't, I don't vibe with this that much. And then I discovered, well, I should say, I, lo- I love Lil Wayne now. But uh, back then, when I was young, like, I was so accustomed to just, like, rock and roll and stuff like that, that I just, it was weird for me. I, like, didn't know what to think about it. But um, then I got introduced to Mac Miller through his song, Nike's On My Feet. And I was just, like, blown away. And, like, I don't know why I loved it so much, but I started um, really, like, he was the first artist in general that I, like, started to, like, think of as more than just, oh, this is just a song playing where I'm at. Like, he was the first person I was like, I want to know about this person. I want to hear his other music. And it was, like, the first real experience i had where i like wanted to go beyond just what i was hearing wherever i was at you know like if i I was hearing something over the radio i wanted to go beyond that and i remember like i was uh i really got into all his music and i mean he was relatable it was easy to relate to him because he was just a little bit older than me um he's like five four years older than me or something like that. Um, And I would like rap along with them. And that's when things really started to change because I was like, whoa, like my voice kind of sounds like not that bad. Um, And that honestly, that's what sparked the first ever thought of like, I, I probably didn't even think at the time that I would make, like, that, that wasn't even on my mind, you know, making music, but that was probably the first time that I ever was, like, dang, like, I kind of sound good, or, like, I sound, I sound, like, okay. So, that was, like, a huge moment, you know? If that didn't happen, I, I have no clue where I'd be right now. 
did you like hear Nike's on the feet on like the radio or something? Or do you have like um, someone introduced my you friends? To my friends were were playing it. Um, cause it was like right when that song blew up and some of my friends were playing it and I was like, Whoa, this is like unlike anything I've ever heard before. Um, and yeah, I was just like, what is the name of this song? And I went home and I remember I like all my friends only knew that one song and that was like the song that everyone was playing. And I went home and like looked up all his other songs at the time and I came back and I was like, next time i hung out with those people i was like dude this guy makes awesome music and like ever since then i've been like a diehard fan and yeah it's such a shame that he passed away yeah for sure well yeah that was a really good question man Thanks. keep him coming all right let's let someone else speak all right let's see my cat's meowing at the door on my other hand Come on in. Come on. All right. Let's see. Prism. What you got for me, Prism? What's hey. up, Prism? What's going on, man? Nothing much. What's your name, man? You you, you want to share your name? Yeah, my name's Thomas. Thomas? Um, What's up, Thomas? So I'm just, like, kind of starting off. I'm kind of interested in making music, so. What's up? My question is, like, if you have any advice for like new people getting into it. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, do you want to be like a producer or like, um, like do you sing or do you rap or do you like to do vocals or just kind of software? Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm kind of looking at doing that. I'm like learning how to use FL studio, making beats and stuff. Um, yeah. Cause like well, any advice for like write, writing lyrics or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it's tough to, like, force um, lyrics, I would say. But there's always, it's always good to force, pra you can always force practice. You know, like, you may not get, if you set out to write a great song, forcing it might not work. But mm -hmm. if you set out to practice, you, you can force that. Like, you could maybe, you know, when I was in... Um, I majored in songwriting in college, and one thing they would have us do a lot is, um, like, pick up a book or literally look around you and just find a phrase or something. Like, if you see, you know, if there's, like, a motivational quote somewhere or, like, if you just open a book to any page and you find a line in there and you try to come up with something, a concept based around that phrase or that line, and just kind of like build a story um and then yeah like i mean for me like i was saying earlier i kind of just like let the first line come to me naturally um but you know if it's just for practice you can start the first line with that phrase itself that you find or that you flip the page open to the book or whatever you could start with that phrase and kind of like build off of it sort of as like a practice tool um, another good thing to do, I mean, like I was saying, uh, taking walks just really helps, like, I don't know, something about being in motion. If you're just walking around, you know, looking at nature, like, all those things can, can slightly help. Um, and then there's just a bunch of, like, little songwriting tools that you can probably, um, I mean, if you, if you like search on Google or YouTube or something, songwriting tools, there's a bunch of like little, little things that can help like literary tools, like, you know, alliteration where it's like the same, this, uh, like re repeating the same, repeating words that start with the same letter, like, uh, I don't know, like, are you actually the A and R and the a and actually like little things like that can can t help take things to the next level so once you you know you get comfortable with walking around and just like basing something off of a, a quote you see or whatever once you get comfortable with that you can start to kind of see if you can use those tools and then it's also good to just like 
write in general. Um, it doesn't have to be lyrics. You can just write. You can wake up and you can write your dreams down. Or, you know, you can write down how you're feeling in the, in this moment, like your mental state or just the concept of writing really translates to lyrics, like whether it's lyrics or not. So, um, yeah, I would say just practice and be consistent with your practice. And, yeah, I mean, all that combined is just, I mean, if you do all that, you, you should be good to go. Sweet. Yeah, man. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks yeah. for the question. Yeah. All right, we got Logi. Uh, oh, yeah, what's up? I talked to you earlier. What's up, Logi? Yeah. Logan, right? Uh, what's, yeah. What, what's, what's up, Logan? How'd you, like, get your name Foster? So, my name is Colin Foster Taylor. Foster is my middle name. And I always did not love my first name, Colin. Um, and I don't know why, really. I mean, I think part of it, maybe when I was younger, like a lot of, I think a lot of people have to do this, but I went to like speech therapy. Um, and I guess I like struggled with my R's and stuff like that. But I don't know, for some reason saying Colin was always like kind of hard for me and so that's part of the reason i just don't like my name but i don't know i i thought foster sounded dope and i was always jealous of people that had cool names and i was like i mean one day i was just like dude it's my middle name so like i'm just gonna start going by that and i had a lot of artist names actually that Pizza is probably big and dug up, but um, like I was, um, <laughs> I mean, some of them are kind of embarrassing, but I used to be called Foster the Kid. Um, but yeah, I just shortened it to Foster because it's just my actual middle name. And I, I really like the name too. Yeah, that's a good question, dude. Yeah, that's Thanks, man. All right. Um, let's see. Anybody in the text chat? It's <laughs> the cat. Um, I don't have my my camera in here, but I'll post a picture of the cat after this. Mikey's on my feet too far. Too shy to ask questions, dude. You can ask. You can just type the questions. Um, if you don't want to, if you don't want to talk, you can just type them in the AMA chat. That's totally fine. Well, also, you don't. It's okay to talk. I'm. I'm not scary. I promise. Um. All right. We got another one for Sleepy Alex. What's up, Alex? What's up? Um, so following after the song uh, "Fools," would you think would you would there be any other song that you would make in the future that would be connected from the song, or like in any type of way, like let's say you did like an album based upon it? That's a good question. Um, I well, I think to begin with, that song has kind of that uh like an example of maybe like the genre i guess that i'm gonna start leaning towards because like some of you probably don't know but like i've said I've, I've been making music for 10 years now and um like fools was really the first song that sounded like it sounds that i made like for that i would say it was more pop um oriented i mean at the beginning it was like actual like hip-hop like i was like rapping rapping like really trying to be like super lyricist guy you know um but since fools had so much success and i really enjoyed making it as well and i, I like that kind of music a lot um 
So I think like that setting an example for the the new music I'm working on um for the most part has like the same kind of vibe to it at least um and as far as like an extension to fools um I might I mean you know if something presents itself as an opportunity to do something like that I may, I may do that I've thought about um like kind of like name dropping it or like doing like a not name dropping it but like kind of alluding to it in the lyrics of a couple songs that I've been writing um just as kind of a cool little thing but uh I don't know that would be interesting I mean it it could be cool to do like a similar sample um to as the you know the Elvis sample do something similar to that and it be kind of like a not titled but like uh fool's part two sort of deal but i don't know i think that'll come down the road right now i'm just kind of making what comes to me and um i've got a lot of cool stuff um that uh i'm working on i've got quite a few songs that are almost done um and then of course this one that's coming out but yeah that's a interesting question I'll, i'll have to think about that more Thanks, man. Thanks. All right, let's see. What Muzi or Muzzy says, what was your inspiration for the full song? Um, so the inspiration for Fools really just came, like, it's kind of just a song about, like, how I felt in the moment you know um i am a fool (laughs) first off uh because i am always you know i'm always going for girls that are out of my league or like developing crushes really easily and stuff like that and um i think at the time and probably still even now um I was just frustrated with not the girls that I liked not liking me back. And um that and I, I heard the beat um from sarcastic sounds and I was like, Wow, this is this is awesome and I kind of wanted to play off of the idea of of the sample, like the lyrics of the sample and just kind of flip it into a, a, a more like modern love. It's not a love story, but like um, heartbreak story, I guess, like a more modern one. Um, and yeah, I, like I said, I really just kind of like wrote how I felt. Um, I wrote it mostly while I was in the car. At that time, I wasn't going on walks. I, w- I would go drive. Um, both of those work for me, but yeah, I was just driving in the rain, and I pulled over, and I just like I pulled over when I heard the beat, I think, and um, I just wrote the first lyrics. I wonder if I'm ever on her mind, like she's on mine, and I was like, "Whoa, I should really sit down and think about how I can do this." And then I, over the next couple months, I kind of tried to achieve what I was talking about of flipping it into a more modern take on heartbreak um, and being a fool. And yeah, I mean, it just all came together naturally. But it's a good question, man. See, that wasn't so hard. You typing it in, it's not that scary. I'm a nice guy, don't worry. See, we got pizza again. What's up, pizza? Can you hear me? Okay. What's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, are you ever going to, like, try producing again? That's a really good question. All these have been really good questions. Um, I know. Yeah. Too much. You know the way too much? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely am. Um, it's. 
that's a weird situation I'm in with with producing. Like I enjoy producing. Um, I'm not like amazing at it, but I consider myself to be like decent or pretty good at it. And a lot of times, when when I want to produce is when I can't find any beats, um, because I get frustrated and I'm like, like fuck it, I'll just make I'll make one myself, and then I end up like spending a lot of time and not liking what I make. But um, as of recently, I've like I've had beats, I've had stuff to work on, so I haven't been producing that much. But when I don't have stuff, I'll just produce a lot for fun really and even when i do do have stuff i'll i'll produce just for fun um but i keep getting better as i get more comfortable with like just you know everything that uh goes into producing and so i think like over time and as i start to have more time to like focus on being um I already have plenty of time, but, like, as I start focusing more on the creative, like, really trying to find myself creatively, um, I want to, like, I do want to start producing some of my own stuff, just so that it's, like, true, truly me. Like, you know, all me. Not in, like, a selfish way, um, but just, like, so that I can, like, make the most authentically me song um just to see like see what happens really but i have some stuff that i've produced that is just that i don't consider up to par or that i don't like enough but eventually something not not far from now i would say something's going to come out that i produced sounds good but, yeah man good one all right, yeah, let's see. One Cheese, that's a funny name, <laughs> says, what got you interested in making music and what drove you to keep going? Um, well, I first got interested in music um, when I was in, let's see, I was in eighth grade, I think. Um, and I would say even before this, what I had told, said earlier about singing along to Mac Miller when I was like 12 or 13 or whatever, I, um, I, that was probably the first thing that kind of even captured my interest a little bit. And then in eighth grade, um, as, as dumb as it sounds a lot of my friends would like freestyle and we'd like skip gym class and like freestyle and stuff, but I would never do it because I'm still, and I always have been pretty shy, I guess. And, um, I don't know. I just never, I never wanted to do it. And then like, I finally did it. I don't know what kind of like pushed me over the edge, but I finally did it. I guess I just got more comfortable with those people. And, um, and I was like, this is fun. Like, it was almost like jumping off, you know, like jumping into the lake or something, jumping off of a diving board, you know what I mean? Something like that, where it was like, I was scared to do it. And then once I did it, I wanted to go do it again. Um, and so I started like freestyling just for fun. And then I was like, wow, like, not, I didn't think like, oh, I'm really good at this, but I was like, if I could sit down and like, like, think for longer, I could be good at this because I was like, I was pretty good at like rhyming stuff, but like, obviously, like what I was saying just like didn't make any sense. So I was like, what if I sat down and thought this out? And so I started to do that. And then I really fell in love with the idea of like, the freedom of like, just being able to like, I don't even know, like, make stories and, like, tie things together and have, like, a conversation through a song. And it was just, like, super interesting to me. And then I remember 
one of my friends at the time he made music and um he kind of like opened my eyes that i could like actually do music like i didn't even know what to do at that point i don't think like how you would even go about making music like i I probably thought at that point you had to like be in a studio with a label or something but um i started making music with him and i thought i was good and i wasn't very good because i sounded super young and i just talked about weird stuff in, in my lyrics but um i ended up like getting the equipment i needed to do it on my own and um yeah i just like really the second part of your question what drove me to keep going is really the the interesting part because like i kind of just like burned it in my mind that i was going to do this and i don't even really know how to explain it but like i i just like got so obsessed with the idea of doing it and like what i like where i envisioned myself and like my dream of like you know at the time i was like oh i want to be like super famous and like everybody listens to my music but now it's more just like i want people to listen hear my music and enjoy it and stuff but um i don't know i just like really like i said burned it into my head that i was going to do it and like it just kind of took me over it's like all i thought about still all i think about is just like i gotta i gotta keep working on my craft and keep getting better and being consistent and yeah so i guess i don't even know really the answer to it i guess it's just things fell into place and my mind won't let me stop thinking about it so but i love it so it's a it's an all right thing that's a good one um let's see if we got anybody in here Okay, we got Logan again. What's up, Logan? So, this question is, um, how do you find your beat? That's a good question. Um, Well, I used to find them all on YouTube, and then they made, I would just type in, like, the kind of music I'd like to make, like, say i was trying to make something that sounded like mac miller or like j cole or something i would type in mac miller type beat or j cole type beat that's how generally how people search for beats when they do it on youtube um and i did that for so long and i mean that's how i found the fool's beat i don't remember what i typed in but uh it was kind of just like weird back then it's changed now um for the most part like back then you would just like um like email the person and be like yo i want to buy this and they'd like they'd be like okay send me twenty dollars and he sent me twenty dollars and that would be it which is like crazy because and that's actually what happened with the fool's beat um like sarcastic sounds was just like all right send me 20 bucks and i sent him 20 bucks um but like now they have um like a website called beat stars uh where you can if you're a producer you can make an account and post your beats there and you can still post them on youtube but you can if you post them on youtube you can say like go to beat stars to um to buy the beat and then that way you get like a an actual contract with the beat um and it's much more like uh safe for for both parties really um but it's tough finding beats man i mean everybody makes beats nowadays it seems like um and so there's a lot of sifting through beats that i don't enjoy to to find the ones that i do um but luckily, with the success of Fools and signing to a label, I, I've been able to 
work with some people that, um, like I've been, you know, put in contact with people that I, I really admire. And actually, that brings up a pretty cool, funny story that I'll probably be talking more about on social media. But um, the producer of this song that's coming out on June 3rd, his name's Christoph Anderson. And I have been a huge fan of him for like years and years. And um, I remember when they first told me, they were like, we're going to set you up with him to to write a song. And I was like, no way. I was so excited. And I went and I found, I had tweeted at him um, like in 2016 or something. And I was like, dude, I like, I'm such a huge fan of you, man. I, I hope one day we get to work together so bad. And he was like, word, man, thanks. And I remember like when we first got in the session to work together, I showed him that tweet and it was just crazy. It was full circle. But yeah, so right now I'm getting sent a lot of beats from publishers and um, label people and then just like other producers that I know. Um, and yeah, but I mean, I'm still looking on YouTube and stuff. And I think YouTube and BeatStars, if you're just starting out or even if you're not just starting out, is like probably the best way to go. As long as you get everything squared away legally. Um, it's, it's definitely, there's some gems out, gems out there that you can, you come across them, you come across a fool's, fool's kind of beat, like, those are the ones that can really take your song to the next level. That's a good question now. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks. Logan. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Um, have I ever listened to Sleepy Alex says, have you listened to Slip Funk? Uh, I think I have. Um, but honestly, I don't know. They say, if so, who's, who do you think has a better sound, him or sarc sarcastic sounds? I haven't listened to enough of Slip Funk, but I really, really, really like sarcastic sounds. And I don't know. I haven't listened to enough to say really, but sarcastic's the goat. So, who is your favorite singer? Hmm. Well, I mean, Mac Miller is my favorite singer. I guess he's a singer, but um, obviously he passed away. So, if I had to choose someone alive, I don't know, man. That's a tough one. Um, that is a tough. I I don't even listen to like a ton of music to be honest. Um, mostly the stuff I listen to is like older stuff that I liked a while back. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like my favorite. I don't really have favorites right now. I kind of just like changes every week like i'll hear a new song on new music friday or something and i'll start listening to that song for the next few months and then another song will come out and i'll start listening to that one yeah um but there's a lot of people i love like uh just to name a few like john bellion um john mayer Quinn ninety two. Um, I mean, like J Cole. I guess he's a singer. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a ton. I'd have to pull up my Spotify or something. Um. Okay. Sleepy Alex says, seeing that you're almost done with the other songs, would you put them along with Fools and the new one coming out into an album or EP? If so, would it be some 50-style lo-fi album? Um, so, that is probably, it's probably going to be an EP, I think. Um, and 
it I mean I don't want to say it's all 50 style but it's definitely all got like a like a older nostalgic lo-fi feel to it but I wouldn't consider it like straight lo-fi it's kind of like the stuff that I have so far is kind of like I don't know. I mean, it's just like some of it is actually pretty online with that 50 style, but I guess some of it's more new sounding, I guess. But I'll probably start posting some snippets after um after this next song the promotion for that i'll pro- probably uh post some snippets snippets on like tiktok and stuff so if you want to follow me there you'll probably get to hear some stuff that is unreleased this is uh, i love snippet <laughs> yeah Who all we got in here hasn't asked a question. And dude, I feel like the teacher right now, and I'm like, no one's got a question. You gonna make me call on you? That's what they always used to say. Yoon's in here, Space Cadets in here, Rainbow's in here. Let's get a let's get a question from Joey Island, my manager, who's in here. If you can, you can talk right now. Um. All right, we got some questions coming in. Uh, what were the other lo-fi artists' reactions when you blew up? Said uh, Sleepy Alex asks. So. They were, I mean, it's so weird because, like, I wasn't a lo-fi artist before, as I've said. Um, But, I mean, I wasn't even really, I didn't know much about the lo-fi scene. Um, Like, to me, lo-fi was, (laughs) to me, lo-fi was, um, like, beats and i hadn't really even heard of lo-fi being what it is where it's i mean obviously there's still like lo-fi beats but um the the community of like you know pow fu and all those people i hadn't even really heard of that but i know so fools got posted on promoting sounds which is like a big lo-fi channel shout out to them you should go check them out on youtube and Spotify and all that if you haven't heard of them before. But um they posted fools and I remember seeing like Pao Fu commented on it and like thought it was amazing and stuff and um I like come to find out who who Pao Fu is. Like I didn't even know. And I mean he's he's amazing. Um and like a bunch of them hit me up and just like wanted to either just tell me they liked the song or wanted to work with me and it was just so cool it was such like a friendly environment like everybody hit me up and was just like i've got some new friends because of um other artists in the community that have reached out to me um i've become friends with so it's really cool they they all kind of reacted i, I didn't expect anybody to react at all i remember when i posted it i posted it like uh i posted fools on soundcloud like forever three years ago and i just posted it and i think i tweeted and that's it (laughs) i didn't like expect really anything to come from it um i just thought the people that listened to my music at the time were gonna like it and that that was all i thought
Um, Joey Highland says, how did you find such an ugly manager? Um, I don't know, dude. I mean, uh, let's see. When did I meet him, man? Uh, I was probably in high school, early high school. And I was like, dude, this guy is so 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 ugly and probably bad at like ping pong and he was like hey i'm joey and i was like hey man he was like dude i'm your biggest fan ever can i please manage you and i was like yes and that's how that happened (laughs) no i'm just kidding joey's the goat but uh we actually did meet sort of like that like he was at my shows at first um yeah it's because i felt bad for him i was like ah man i can tell you're having a tough time i guess you can be my manager forever (laughs) um okay yeah like he was at my shows we still got a picture um legendary picture him at a show he bought a t-shirt that i was selling and uh, yeah it's crazy. Uh, like I now we're best friends, and he's my manager, and we've gone through all this crazy shit together. Um, yeah, and it's like one of the only pictures we've got of each other. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, but that's my right hand, my right hand man right there. Bro, sure. That's a funny name. Yo, I can't talk right now, but I had a question. Where do you find the style of clothes you wear, like the jacket you wore in Fools and that type of stuff? Um, so, interestingly enough, for the Fools video, I actually had a stylist um, who helped me pick out clothes. And uh, that was a very new experience for me. But um, basically, I went to this stylist's place, and they had previously bought a bunch of clothes and in my size and, like, had it all laid out. And I basically just went through and, like, looked at all the clothes, and I was like, this is dope, this is dope, and this is dope. And, yeah, I just p- picked out the outfit I wanted to wear. It was basically, like, shopping at a store that only has your size and your style of stuff. Um, And yeah, I just picked that out. And I was like, these are dope. And that's how it went. But I like, um, when I buy clothes for myself, I like PacSun a lot. Sometimes. Sometimes they're, I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But H&M is dope. I usually just wear, like, solid color t-shirts and, like, jeans or, like, sweatpants and some cool shoes. I don't dress too crazy. Um, that's a good question. Let's see. Sleepy Alex says, so when you're a new artist coming out, how would you get someone big as sarcastic sounds or anyone? How would you be able to contact them or get their attention for a song? Like, I'd love to be able to buy a beat from Sarcastic Sounds, but don't know how. Okay, so... The thing with that is, like... As I said, when I first bought... Or, when I first, like, began the long-time collab with Sarcastic Sounds... Because I made Fools three years ago. Um... He wasn't, he was, like, nowhere near where he is now. I mean, me and him were just, like, I mean, especially me, but we were both, like, not even on, we had no real huge traction or anything. He was, like, um, he was doing well, but he wasn't, like, sarcastic sounds like he is now. So. That's why I was able to. I don't think you can just really 
or I don't even think it's the, the right move necessarily to just like try to reach out to someone like Sarcastic Sounds for a beat because, well, first off, if you're trying to buy a beat from Sarcastic Sounds, it's going to cost a lot of money right now, like a lot of money. Um, but I think the the thing to do is catch, just like find the people that are trying to make it right now and trying to be, you know, a bigger artist who are also maybe new artists or, or not even new, but just like have been making music for a little while and know what they're doing. Try to catch them before they blow up and not like use them or anything like that, but like just find the people that you think are dope that maybe aren't huge as big as sarcastic sounds or anything like that. And collaborate with them and who knows you know they could be the next sarcastic sounds and then if you're friends with them or if you've made a song with them then you know you know how to contact them at that point so like you know that's how i was able to is because i i mean i talked to him all that time ago when he was not as big as he is now um that's the only reason i was able to i mean if i was in if I had tried to contact him three years ago and he was as big as he is now, he wouldn't have answered me. Probably. But, yeah. That'd be my advice for that. Yeah, there's that picture. Legendary picture. Prism says, when are you going to start selling merch? I don't know. I want to sell merch soon. I think merch would be sick. Um, unfortunately, I, I would, okay, so I think merch will come with the first project I drop, to be realistic. So it won't be, like, too long off, but, um, I'm gonna make sure it's really cool. I'll buy it when it drops, Slogan says. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I wanna make it really cool so you guys can look dope out there wearing it. Um. But um, it sucks that hoodie season isn't in right now anymore. But I I bet you when I drop it, by the time I drop it, it'll be hoodie season again. Sleepy Alex. We talk about this pig. Baby girl. <laughs> um Base Cadet, what's up man? What's up, Comfy? We gonna get another collab with Sodi? Um there's nothing on the table right now, but I would think at some point, I mean we're both on the same label. So, and we've already made a song together. So I think for sure at some point. And she's great. So, you know, I mean, if the opportunity presents itself, definitely. Uh, I would definitely be down for that. Worldwide delivery. I would think so. Um. Yeah, I would think so. I'll make sure. Yeah. I'll make sure everybody gets merch. Um, would I do a merch giveaway? Yeah, for sure. I think that would probably be part of the project promotion. Um. I don't know what it, what the contest would be or anything like that, but some sort of contest, probably. And, yeah, give out a couple, give out merch to a couple people for sure. I would think. <laughs> you gotta have people moving to the States to get it if it ain't worldwide. I, 
if people want it that bad, holy shit, I'll fucking drive it out there to you, man. I'll swim across the ocean with a t-shirt. Can I get a free shirt, says Joey? No. And just I just banned you also. So get out of here. Well, let's see. Do we have any more, any final questions? Anybody want to? Do a final voice question that hasn't spoken yet. That's been just building up the confidence this whole time to say something to me. Because I think I'm scary. Yeah. I, it has been an hour. Holy crap. Um... Well, yeah, I mean, you guys have hit me with some good questions. Um, for me, I'm one of the nice teachers, dude. Trust me. Uh, let me... Real quick. Put this. Okay. Right, let's see. First time I heard fools. Like, yeah, any it didn't even have to be a question. Just last last word. Any last words <laughs> from you guys? Um, I'm gonna rapid fire these. Yes, I'm one of the nice teachers. I am. Um, until I'm not. First time I heard fools. I got goosebumps. Good bumps. <laughs> goosebumps. I'm guessing. Or good good bumps is cool too. Thanks, man. That's that's really cool. When I get goosebumps from a song, it's always awesome. Collab with Aus. Um, yeah, probably at some point. I think he's dope. Um, if he's down, I, I'm down for sure at some point. When will I stream on Twitch? I've streamed a couple times, and I'm going to start streaming more. Um, I will probably stream in the next week. Um, I would think, but I need to start streaming more. Uh, I'll drop my Twitch in the chat. Okay, that didn't turn into a link. Let me do that. Then that actually didn't turn into a link. Also, whatever, you guys get it. Um, do I like Mexican food? Yeah, thank you, pizza. Thank you. Uh, do I like Mexican food? Dude, I am so hungry right now. I would eat infinite Mexican food right now. Chips and salsa. Oh, man. Why did you have to say that, Bean? I'm so hungry right now. I'm literally eating immediately after I get out of this. Um... What's it like creatively being signed on a big label, says Ringbow? Um, it's actually pretty much the same as it was before. I think that depends on the label, probably. But um, the label I'm with, Relentless, um, they're really cool about making sure I make what, just have full control create creative aspects. I think the only influence they have had so far is just sending me beats um and saying what what they like more than other things to focus on uh but i'm not gonna have any i don't plan to ever be out of control creatively like i i'm that's a big thing with me and if i'm not in control there's gonna be a big problem so as i i'll be in control so um i think it just depends on the label but like i said they're really cool about it Oh, everyone did because somehow we related to that song. Yeah, like, I appreciate you guys relating, but I also, like, feel bad because I, it sucks to, to be in the position of the lyrical content to fools. Because, I mean, I know I was there when I wrote it, but, uh, so now you won't collab with you. Hope someone's lyrics for a song or help with a song if we ask. 
Uh, I'm probably not going to do that. I don't do, um, I really don't do that kind of thing. Or like, I don't like to give feedback either, just because I think the best feedback is from the people you know the best and who you trust the most and who who give you the most honest opinion or answer or anything like that. And yeah, I would, I don't want to like interfere with a creative process like that. And also, like, legally, I don't think I would be able to do that uh, without making a big deal about it. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so last thing. Thank you guys for staying, by the way. But uh, this, if you click that link for me if you haven't already, that... Like, I don't know if you guys know, but pre-saving is, like, very much the make or break for a song's success. Um, so, if you can take, if you have Spotify, you could take 10, 15 seconds and pre-save. That would help me out so much. Um, and, yeah, it would mean the world to me. So, but yeah, other than that, guys. Great questions. It was cool to finally hear y'all's vo- some of y'all's voices. Um, and the people that didn't talk, also he- cool to hear your questions. Um, hope I helped with any advice questions. And hope y'all um, have a good rest of the day or night or whatever time it is for you right now. And thanks for joining, guys. We'll do something like this soon again, so don't worry. All right. Peace.